Hey everybody, April 15th and it's tax day, so it seems like a great idea to make a video to save a little bit of money today. My tomato plants are getting pretty large and it's about time that I stake them up permanently. Right now there are some little bamboo stakes that are holding them up from when they were smaller seedlings, now they're too big for them, so I need to get heavy duty stakes. And if you've ever tried to buy tomato stakes before, you'll know that the tomato stakes at garden centers are incredibly expensive. A lot of times a stake will be five, six dollars for a five or six foot tall stake of either uh, ratty wood or some kind of plastic. And they're not very good because once you bury them 12 to 18 inches deep, you're left with a four or five foot stake to stake up your indeterminate tomatoes. And that is not big enough in most cases. So what you see here are furring strips. I purchased these from Lowe's. Here's the piles of pressure treated furring strips. Dollar eighty eight a piece. If you don't want pressure treated, they have all different sizes of natural. These are a buck twenty four for eight foot sections. What these are used for are basically shims to level things. They're throwaway pieces of wood, but they're actually eight feet tall and they're pretty sturdy. So I went to Lowe's and I picked these up because they are a fraction of the price of tomato steaks, but yet they are stronger and much longer. So you'll notice I went with the pressure treated wood. I originally thought it would be a great idea to go with the pressure treated wood because it would last more seasons, but what I found is that the pressure treated wood, it's not quite as firm as the standard wood and it's more difficult to cut. So hopefully that doesn't come back and bite me. If I could do it all over again, I'd probably save the money and get the non-pressure treated, but it's already done. So what you want to do is you want to cut the bottom of these into spikes so you can drive it into the ground. And I will show you how to do that using a simple hand saw. If you have an electric saw, that would be a lot better, but this is what I have, so this is what I'm going to use. And remember, these cuts do not have to be perfectly straight, we're just trying to make a point. and that'll give us a sharp point to drive into the ground. When you place the stakes next to the plant, one thing you want to make sure of is that you don't place it right up against the plant. And the reason why is because tomatoes love sending roots in the top of the soil, and the closer you get to the main stem, the denser and denser the root is. So you want to give it several inches of space. That way you don't drive your stake right through the heart of the root system. The other thing you want to do is you, tr you want to try to get your stakes in the ground when the tomatoes are still fairly young so they haven't had a chance to develop a really, really deep root system and a really extensive root system because the older the tomato plant, the more advanced the root system, the more damage you will cause by driving a stake through it. So the earlier you set these stakes, the better. And here are what the stakes look like set next to all of the tomato plants. Now the interesting thing about tomato plants is they will grow basically to the height of their support infrastructure. So this is a big reason why I don't like tomato cages. Tomato cages are usually four or five feet tall and it actually winds up stunting the growth of your tomato plant. Your tomato plants won't get any taller than five or six feet or so. And that's perfectly fine if you're growing um, dwarf or determinate style tomatoes because they, they grow to a predetermined height. But indeterminate tomatoes will grow indefinitely until they're killed off by pests, frost, or disease. So these will keep growing and they can reach easily nine, 10 feet tall by the end of the season if they're healthy and nothing attacks them. So this is why it's very important to use these eight foot or taller furring strips. That gives your tomatoes a lot of room to grow because once you embed these into the ground, these get embedded in the ground about, about 18 inches deep in order to be firm enough to give the tomatoes enough support. They have to be buried pretty deep. 
So that means these stakes are only about six and a half feet tall. So even using these really big furring strips, my tomato plants are limited to about seven and a half feet of growth. They'll only grow about six to twelve feet. Uh, uh, they'll only grow about six to twelve inches above these these stakes. Any more than that, and it just becomes impossible to support. So the taller the staking you can give these tomatoes, the better. If you followed my channel last year, um, I trellised my tomatoes, which I believe is absolutely the best way to grow your tomatoes, but it is pretty difficult to trellis on 10-foot raised beds like this. So this is my first year with my garden. I'm going to give these stakes a try. If you can fit trellising, uh, go that way, but if you're going to go the stake route, um, you want to go uh, and get the tallest stakes you can possibly get. and these are probably some of the tallest you can get, definitely one of the cheapest and sturdiest options you can get. I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel, and I hope to see you again next time.